Thank you so much, Raleigh, and many, many thanks to whoever it was out there in Unity Village in Missouri who was assigned to come up with the dedications for this month's Daily Word. Oh my God, the Daily Word is so, so, so clear about the power that we have, a power that we do not always exercise, but a power that is ours and available for us to exercise anytime we choose. The scripture that ended the Daily Word this morning was a scripture that my father preached on many times, reminding us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. This was to remind us that our confessions are spoken confessions, and the confessions we speak to ourselves in our own mind are always creating. They are creative thoughts. All of our thoughts are creating. They are creating what we're speaking. I like to think that whenever we speak the words I am that are our name, they are our God name. When Moses was visited or visited God by the burning bush and God told Moses to do something that Moses did not feel capable of at all. He felt completely unqualified to do what God asked him to do. God asked him, of all people, to go to the Pharaoh in Egypt and to tell the Pharaoh to let God's people go. Moses certainly didn't feel capable of taking on such a big job. He felt inadequate. So when God tells us to do something that's big, by standing in God's power within us, we often do what Moses did. We come up with our excuses and our alibis as to why we just don't have it together enough to do such a big thing. To get released, God's people. This is to release the hidden splendor that lies within you. All of us are unfolding grace to grace. And if we could see, just for a moment, all that it is possible for us to be and to become, what a glad shouting hallelujah day that will be when we see the potential us waiting for us to step into that self and to own it. Moses said to God, you got the wrong person here. I am not equipped to do great things for the Almighty One. Haven't you noticed I stutter and stammer when I speak? You don't want a stutterer, someone with a stammer, to go to Egypt and stand before Pharaoh and say, G -g 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 God wants you to, to, to free, free his people. You've got to have a better choice out there. God says, no, Mose, it's you. You are the one I have chosen. You see, you don't know who you are, but I do. You don't know your power, but I can see it clearly. You know, many of us tend to believe that who we are is the personality who bears our name, that we are the ego self. We think of ourselves as being a product of our parents, a product of our early childhood experiences for good or bad. We really believe this is who we are. We're a person. This is my personality. Many times we forget that the word person is just a brief for the word persona. A persona is not who we are, it's who we present as. Moses, you're presenting as a stutterer. You are presenting as someone who stammers. You are presenting as someone who believes you are unworthy to do the great things that God has called upon you to do. But I see through your persona. Persona means mask. I don't see the face you put on, Moses. I see beneath it. 
I see the radiant being that you are. This is what all of my created ones are. Each and every one of you bear the image and the likeness of the Almighty One that I am. Moses, go to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Metaphysically, the Israelites being in Egypt represent our potential to be godlike, entrapped and in captivity to our mediocre thoughts of who we are. For us, there is no Moses in Egypt, but metaphysically, we are Moses and Pharaoh and all of the Israelites and all of their captors. We get to be who we say we are. But praise God, hallelujah, when God intervenes and says you're not who you say you are. You are who I know you are. Moses said, well, they're going to ask by what authority I come. If you insist that I go, you know, God does not want or need our full-blown enthusiasm to do the will of God that is set before us. All God needs is a little willingness. Moses, even thinking you're not worthy, do you have a little willingness to follow my directions? Moses said, well, I'll go, but who will I tell them sent me? And the voice from the bush spoke. It's the only time in the scriptures in their entirety that God speaks God's own name, a name which must be ours as well. We are the creations of the creator. Mose, tell them I am that I am. Tell them I am has sent you. This is our true name. And we follow it with many, many other descriptions, most of them about the persona. Most of us say I am and follow it with something far more limited than God says we are, something quite different. We have come to believe we are the persona when the real us is hiding behind a mask. I am, tell them I am has sent you. Anytime we speak the word I am, we are speaking our God name. And anything that follows those words, we declare to the universe to be our truth. Back in the 50s in my little circle, especially in my church, dealing with all of the racism, the unleveled playing field, dealing with all of the countless times our people were being cursed and trampled on and rights taken and no rights ever given sometime. One of the favorite I am statements that many of the children of God were speaking, not even knowing the depth of the power of life and death in their tongue. The most common statement that I can remember, spoken pretty much daily by pretty much everyone around me in their complaints about the what is, their complaints about the world, the trials and tribulations of the world, and our struggle to be free. These are the words often spoken. I am sick and tired of what white people are doing to our people. I am sick and tired of the racism I have to deal with on my job. I am sick and tired of my children not being raised up and lifted up and affirmed by some of these teachers. I am sick and tired of this mess. Well, I noticed a lot of them were sick. And a lot of them 
looked not just tired, but even depleted, affirming over and over and over and over, I am sick and tired of this mess. Some of them even prefaced it, used it as a preface. I am sick of this old world. This whole world of trials and tribulations. I can't wait to get home to be with my Lord and out of this mess. Using an I am statement and completing it with what you don't want is creating what you don't want. I am. When we say the words I am, any of us, as a child of God, the very angels know that we have the authority as the children of God to be the Moses, the one whom God has sent. When we say I am, the angels lean forward, getting ready to fly, to bring us a deeper experience of who we say we are. What's going to follow the word I am that Reverend Carl, that Carly is speaking right now? What's going to follow the word I am that my daughter Lauren is about to speak right now? And whatever we follow the words I am with, the angels take off flying in all of the invisibility of this universe. This universe is nothing but potential waiting to be realized. If I say I'm sick and tired, as much as the angels might think, that's not really a good affirmation to be making, Carly boy. All they can do is bring me more of the experience of who I say I am. When I say I'm scared, the angels have no choice but to bring to us the energy and the experience and the reason to be more scared. The child of God has made a declaration and it is our command. I am, which is why Charles Fillmore was so much about denials and affirmations. That was the hugest part of his ministry. I've been with Unity for many, many years, and I know that for the first number of years, almost every church was really pushing this very important foundation for living that Charles Fillmore bought to the Unity churches and to the ministries, the power of denial and affirmation, because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Fillmore said, don't begin with affirmations because you can't put, you can't put icing on dog poop and make it a dessert. Some of us are doing affirmations and they're covering up so many things that cancel the affirmation out. The affirmation has no power. We speak, I live an abundant life. I am unlimited in my abundance. And I put that on top of a consciousness that is filled with desperation about money, desperation about funds, complaints about what I don't have. And when I say I am the holy abundant child of God, there is no room in my mind for that to soak down to the lower levels of my consciousness and to root themselves in their power. So Chuck Fillmore says, before you do an affirmation, make sure you do a denial. I deny all thoughts of poverty, lack, and limitation. I deny all thoughts and spoken words that have come through my mouth that declare that I am limited in any way. I affirm the entirety of the power of God is at my disposal. Use your tongue wisely. It does have the power of life and death. It can build up or tear down. 
It can build up or tear down others in your life. Sometimes your significant others, the ones closest to you, they can tear down or lift up a stranger on the street, a stranger in the grocery store, the power of life or death lies in the tongue. If someone's next to me in a grocery store, I can lift them up or tear them down. I can do it supposedly for very good reasons. I can turn to someone in the grocery line and say, could you back up, please? You're a little close. I'm one of those six feet between me and the other person. Thank you very much. Or we can say, nice haircut. That's awesome. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Denials and affirmations. I may have shared with you some years ago that I was blessed to go to, uh, I think it was a graduation, a, it was a graduation from a, a, a preschool. And the teacher had all these preschool children on stage and there were jars on stage and there were bowls of marbles. Some were green and some were red. And the teacher had put red marbles in half of the jar and told the class, I want you to add green marbles, and I would like you to fill up your entire jar with green marbles. The teacher explained, I was sitting in church that day. I thought I was at a graduation for a preschool. Next thing I know, the teacher has become my preacher. And the lesson that was being displayed was a sermon preached to me. And it was your job is to fill that jar with green marbles. Green is your affirmation. Green is everything you want. Green is happiness and joy and excitement about living and a can-do attitude and talents unfolding in you. The red marbles stop all that. The red marbles are saying, you can't send me, God. I stutter. I have a stammer. Surely you're not asking. The red marbles are limiting thoughts. The green marbles are liberating thoughts. Fill the jar completely with liberating thoughts and affirmations. Got to watch those kids trying and trying, trying to shove all the green marbles, but there was no room because the red marbles were on the bottom and they're trying to affirm, affirm, affirm. But there was so much to be denied before the affirmation could take root. I looked up there and I watched and I went, I don't know how long this thing is going on. There was a little girl, cutest little thing, adorable. She looked like she might not be the most popular child. She looked a little shy. She had really thick glasses. It looked like maybe her mom made her clothes. Nothing that even little kids think of styling. But what she did after a while was she sat and she thought. And she stared at the bowl of marbles and the jar that she was supposed to fill with nothing but affirmations and good thoughts and uplifting ideas. Everybody was confused. All the kids were going, oh man, oh man, how are we ever gonna do this? This can't be done. And then I saw that little girl. She got a big smile on her face. She had an aha moment. She took the green marbles off of the top of the red marbles. And then she took the jar of red marbles and she turned it over in the red marble bowl. And with an empty jar, that child filled that empty jar with green marbles. She knew you can't fill your jar with green marbles if space is being taken by red marbles. So Chuck Fillmore kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Denials and affirmation. Deny all of your I am statements that bring you down, that deny your oneness with the creator. 
that have you be a victim rather than a person of power, have you be a reactor rather than a responder. You got to empty the red marbles out of your jar. You have to get the weeds out of the garden. I can't wait for spring. The first thing I do in the earliest parts of spring, I down to the roots, get out any weeds, any crabgrass, any poison ivy or poison oak, any invading plants that will choke out my flowers or choke out my vegetables. They are the red marbles in my garden. And to prepare that garden for reseeding, I have got to get rid of the weeds if I have any sense at all. Go, Moses. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. The children of Israel metaphysically represent godlike potentials in captivity within us. I am to set them free. Set free the children of Israel, set free the divine potential that is within me, the radiance that I am, set it free, allow it to be. It takes work. You can't go at this half-stepping. It takes work. The renewing of the mind requires the undoing of the old mind. I've said it a hundred times, and you've probably heard me at least 50. My daddy used to say, everybody wants to be born again, but nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to give up their red marbles. Not really, or very few at least. I'm ready to dump my red marbles off into a bowl and push it to the side so I can fill my heart and my mind with the power of the spoken word, the power of my own inner thoughts. And as the Daily Word says today, I won't go guilt tripping myself when I find a red marble or two. I am here to grow. I am here to learn. I'm not about to flatline. I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of another foot in front of another foot in front of another foot, marching on. Life comes at you, don't it? Trials, tribulations, they come at you, don't they? They come time and time and time again. That's their job. Their job is to catch you sleeping. Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ in you, the Christ consciousness in you, the knowing of your oneness with the creator and all of creation in you, that part of you, that truth of you, will give you light. Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Oh, I just get so excited. I get excited anytime I let myself just sit alone with no input, no noise coming in from the outside, so that I can just sit in the stillness and in the quiet, in the silence is where I find my God. I go to my God in the silence and say, what would you have me do? You know, I think I told you, I'm not sure. I speak at a number of churches and I certainly don't remember. I just open my mouth and let it flow. So I don't remember if I flowed this to you or not. But the ego, the personality, the persona, it's not that it's bad in my opinion, in my thought process. It's not that it's bad, it's just that it's misdirected. From what I understand, the ego or the personality who bears our name, the human self was built and put in place to scan the surround. I mean, the spirit can't scan the surround. That's why the spirit became flesh with human eyes, 
human ears. We scan the surround. We see what's going on. We hear what's being said from all of these directions. And that's what the ego is supposed to do. It's a scanner. You scan the surround and you make nothing of it. You're not qualified. What you do or what we're intended to do as ego personalities who bear our name, scan the surround, see what's out there to see, hear what's out there to hear, and then to report back to the Holy Spirit. This is what I see out there. It looks like the government might shut down. This is what I see out there. People are rioting in the streets. This is what I see out there. Black men and black people are being killed. This is what I see out there. Sexism is still very much alive and well, and there's still an unleveled playing field for what women and men get paid. This is what I see out there. There are wars and rumors of war. And what we do is we do not report back to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit what to make of it. We make something of it ourselves. We're unqualified. What we make up are more fear thoughts and more fear thoughts and more reasons to be disgusted. And in the language of those people around me in the 50s, a lot of what we see is just more incentive to use the confession, I am sick and tired of the dangers of this world. And when we speak of it, the angels take off flying. They have no other choice because your word is law as a child of God. If you say I am, it is good to be very conscious and very on purpose with what you follow that with. In the early years that I was in unity, people would catch one another. If someone said, I'm sick. I'm sick with a cold. Someone in unity, we correct you. No, you're being visited by a cold. Don't say I am sick. You can say I am being visited by a cold. I am being visited by a challenge. I am being visited by confusion. I am being visited by upset. That way you keep a distinction between who you are and what it is. The power of life and death is in the tongue, in the spoken word. And thoughts are powerful. Speaking it is even more powerful. And a lot of our lives are lived in the arena of self-talk. That's why I loved the daily words for today. It invites me to look into my mind again and again to identify what I'm thinking and what I'm speaking. A lot of it is uplifting and healing and blessing. But wow. If you're like me, you run into a weed now and again. I love to pause throughout the day, take a deep breath, and ask myself a question. What have you been thinking and affirming in your own mind for the last 20 minutes? You know, I'm my own project. I've told you, you're not my project. I'm my project. I'm not trying to govern you. I'm trying to govern me. I am responsible for my own transformation. I invite people into taking that on for themselves, but it's not my job and I'm unqualified. I'm working on Carlos Wayne Anderson. 24-7, I'm minding my own business because my mind is my true business. Let this mind be in you. 
that is also in Christ Jesus, who knew he was at one with God, yet did not brag about it, invited others to know the same. The radical love, the radical inclusion of the one I follow blows my mind in the most wonderful way. Use your power. It's the daily word. Don't exercise your power over other people. Exercise your power to cooperate with God in the transformation of your mind. Lay not your treasures upon the earth and earthly things. Earthly things have come to pass. Don't make them your treasure. For where your treasure is, your heart is also. Let your treasure be on the finer, eternal things. Peace. Love, cooperation, and one of our favorites, unity, unity. I even like the sound of it, unity, unity, unity. It makes me feel warm. It allows me to relax and to know that what the scripture spoke is true. Where there is unity, there is peace. With love, it is done. Amen.